Hello. In this video, we will draw a curtain and stage for use in games or videos. And we're doing this using the Graphic Image Manipulation Program, also known as GIMP. We will assume that if you are watching this video, that you know what GIMP is, that you know how to open it, and how to start a new project. You can also see that I've resized my project to 500 by 500 by going to the Image tab selecting scale image and then changing the width and the height to 500 by 500 which it should if you change one the other should change if they're still linked click scale and that will give you a little area around your canvas that you will need for some later use <clears throat> and pardon the lag on my program I'm using the online version now for every project I always start by clicking the create new layer button that looks like a piece of paper with the tab turned up and I make sure that transparency is selected. Click OK and you will now have a new layer. Now excuse me for having my layers dialog all the way to the right. Um, I don't really need all of it and it messes up my view in my tiny little view screen here. But you should now have a layer with transparency on top of your layer. I can turn the white layer off now because I like to use the grid behind me. The first thing I'm going to do with my new layer is select the rectangle selection tool, rectangle select tool. And I will select a rectangle that is the width of my picture. It doesn't matter the height, but it does matter that it is from one side to the other and all the way down to the bottom. So basically you're selecting the bottom of your picture. Now the next tool will be the bucket fill tool. The bu bucket fill tool has options. You want to make sure that pattern fill is selected and the pattern you want to select by clicking the little icon there, make sure that pine is selected, which is this one here. And it will say pine in the view screen. Click inside your selection and it will fill it with pine. Now, don't deselect that, make sure it stays selected. Take the perspective tool, which looks like a trapezoid, and click within your selection. Now you can grab the corners of your selection and pull them out to the corner of your canvas, which is why you needed that space. Once that's done, you hit transform, and you will have a transformed layer that you then have to go up to layer, click it, and anchor that layer down. Now your transformed picture is anchored to the layer that you created earlier. So now we need one for the curtain. You start a new layer with transparency on top of all the other layers. And the next tool you're going to be using is called the paths tool. And it looks like a calligraphy pen with some squares next to it. Paths tool. And you're going to be making four points on somewhere within your plank here. And the on make sure you're on your layer within your planks. And you're going to make four points. And the outside two need to line up. They need to be on the same X coordinate according to your ruler here on the side. So I pick one of these lines when I make my first point somewhere on there. I pick a line. And I click it, and again, sorry for the lag here. I'm being extra careful on this one to make sure that I get the uh, get it on the line. But then the next two points that you add to your path can be um, off. It doesn't matter. But as long as they are half about halfway in between your first point and the bottom of your picture, yeah. So somewhere in there you click and then you go out a distance and you click again about twice the length of that line. Um, but if you find that you clicked it and you think it's too far, you can always just click it again and hold it down and drag it back. So you would click it, hold it, and drag it back a little bit and line it up better. And then this fourth one, again, be careful to line it up with your first point that you made on the x-axis, excuse me, x-axis, axis. Whew. Now you need to put a point up here, slightly above the canvas, and one over, about the same width as you. What you're trying to do is make a column path, and 
to connect your path, at, make sure that your last path or the last point that you put on the path is selected and hold down the control button only. And when you hover over the first point that you put on the path, it should two little r linking rings should show up. And then when you click that first point, it should link your last point to the first point and complete your path. Now you can go through and you can adjust all your points to make sure, first of all, that the vertical lines are completely straight, which is why I like to take off the white layer so that I can use the grid behind it to line up these two vertical lines. Make sure they are perfect. these need to be perfectly straight, however you choose to do that. When you're using GIMP and the grid behind it, a straight line tends to disappear against the, the background. Now, the next step is to grab the very center of the middle line here that you've created and pull it down, not all the way to the bottom of your picture, but about down to the bottom. And it should create a nice little bow out like that. On the next lines, you grab them not completely in the center, more towards the, the middle of the entire thing, but you're gonna pull them up and towards the center of your column, just slightly, about one to two pixels worth, not a lot, just slightly up and towards the center of your column on both sides. And if you've done it correctly, and it may take a, a minute or two to get this correct, but you should have what looks like the edge of a puzzle piece, the, you know, the outside edge of a puzzle piece, and then two straight lines. Once that's done, you will click select from path. So select and then down here from path. And now you have selected everything within that path that you created. What you will do now is collect, select the blend tool. And when you select that tool, some a few options are gonna come up. Pardon the lag. My, uh, okay, here we go. First thing you're gonna do is choose what color you want your curtain to be and then click the foreground color and make it a light version of that color since I want my curtain to be red I'm going to choose a lighter color red and the now you click the background color and make that a darker version of whatever color you've chosen so I choose a darker red so now my foreground should be a lighter version of the background then down in the options uh, this is not what you will see. What you will see is linear it because it defaults to a linear blend, but you want to make sure that you select bilinear and make sure that above that it says FG to BG. What it, what it really says is FG to BG. Okay. From the center of your column, drag to the outer right or outer right edge of the column in as straight a line as you can get it. So you click in the middle and drag the line out to the right to the edge and release. And if you have gotten the line perfectly straight, then your highlight will be straight. But if not, as I'm about to demonstrate, you will see that if you don't get it straight, your highlight will start at one point and it will end at another at the top. And if that happens, that's no problem. Just hit control Z and that is undo, or you can actually do edit undo, but for simplicity, simplicity, just hit control Z and that will undo and you'll get another shot at it. So starting from the middle of your column in a straight a line, a path as possible, put that gradient in there. Now you should have a nice highlight straight up and down in your path. From here on out, it is going to be a lot of copy pasting. So you copy by either hitting control C, which is what I usually do, or you can go to edit, copy, click that, and my laggy computer takes a second, and then again, edit, paste, or control V. But for this first one I show here, uh, paste. That control V on the right, those are the shortcuts. Control X for cut, control C for copy, control V for paste. So as we wait for my laggy computer to catch up, I will tell you that from for the next minute or so, it's going to be just copy paste. Okay, here, once you have pasted successfully, 
you will see a floating layer on top of all your other layers. Once you have a floating layer, if you click the new layer button, it will automatically anchor that floating layer down to its brand, a brand new layer of all, all of its own. And you can then take your move tool, which looks like the arrow cross, and grab that new layer and just move it. And line it up as best you can to the outer edge of your first one. And this is where you're going to learn whether or not you got those uh, two outer points on the same X coordinate because they will either line up or they won't line up but it's not that big a deal because once we add the final touch um, some little mistakes will will go a little unnoticed now forgive me the laggy little computer that I'm using is making it very difficult to align these parts so I thought about cutting this out but you're also going to see that it's important to keep each section of this curtain on its own layer. Um, I've now control copied with control C and then control V pasted so that I had a new picture. Then I clicked the new layer tool so that it's on its own layer and then I'm moving it over again. But it, I want to reiterate it's important to keep each one of these on its own layer because as you'll see in a moment I will notice that I have uh, gotten the spacing off when I, I think here when I add the fourth piece you can tell that there's a bunch of space in between my first three sections and if you had anchored if you had control C and control V and then just anchored it to the same layer as your first picture then it would be almost impossible to um, to go back and to re and to move those and to adjust them without having to undo 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 so if you keep them all in their own layer every time you copy paste you click the new layer and uh, anchor it to its own layer that means you can go back and you can move each section to wherever you want it until you get it right yeah so about here this is when I realized oh my gosh there's so much space in between the this section here has a tiny little bit of space but then the next section has a bunch of space and it's also here where my computer decided to lag so if you'll bear with me just a moment further I'll let you in on an insider secret that I was going to make this a video where you try to draw this curtain in under 10 minutes but then I realized how laggy everything was. And I was like, not today. So I'm just readjusting everything, making sure that it lines up a little bit better. And of course, the better you are, or the more practice you have with paths, the better you can make your little curves so that they'll look more natural. These don't look too bad. They, they'll work for the purpose of this video. Okay, so now you'll hear, um, I'm about to do another copy-paste. Actually, you don't have to copy-paste every time. Once you've copied the first time, you can just paste. Just paste, paste, paste. Paste another one, paste another one. Hit, uh, you paste one, then you hit the new layer button. Then you paste one, then you hit the new layer button. Then you paste one, then you hit the new layer button. And you adjust it. So I pasted one, I've hit the new layer button. And now I'm going to move it. if my computer ever wants to cooperate. Oh, that's right. I accidentally added a extraneous layer because of the lag. I pasted twice. So you're going to see two of the layers, the second from the top and the third from the top, are actually the exact same picture. I will fix that after a moment. This video probably would have been under 10 minutes had this little computer not been so laggy. But for again, for the purposes of this video, it's just fine. Now one final one. Now that you've got all the way to the right completed, you're going to paste one more and move it all the way. Uh, hit the new layer button, obviously. Then move it all the way to your left and fill up the left side of your stage.
and it is about here where I about lost my mind because of the lag. So once you're once you've got all of your layers moved over, you're going to start doing what you see me doing now. You go up, you hit layer and merge down, layer, merge down, layer, merge down, all the way up until that last layer. You don't want to merge all the you don't want to merge the layer with the uh, platform. But once you have all of your curtains merged down into a single layer, for example, you can test it by taking the visibility off by clicking the eyeball. And if they all disappear, that means they've all been on the same layer. Then you go into filters. You're going to find a filter called light and shadow. In there, there's an option for drop shadow. Click that. It doesn't matter about your X coordinate, but set it to zero anyway. And I always set Y to five just because I like five better than four. I don't know why. But this is important. Make sure allow resizing is unclicked. You don't want it to resize. Click OK. And now you have a nifty drop shadow on your curtain that is falling onto your floor. And there you have it. A curtain theater. Congratulations.